Hello everyone and welcome to Mod Development in Kerbal Space Program. I'm here to present the Elegant Design Bureau Mod version 0.4.1, which is the first time I've tried to gather a whole bunch of the parts that I've made together in one package. They're of all shapes and sizes, all sorts of things, randomly, whatever I happen to need at the time. So there's no real theme going on here. I'm just going to go through the parts in basically alphabetical order and try and describe them. Uh, they are meant for realism overhaul, so not stock necessarily. If you want to use them in stock, you'll have to go into the mod folder, EDB mods, uh, go into the compatibility folder and delete the files that say RO at the front. And that should help because otherwise you're not gonna have fuel tanks or anything. So you'll need to delete those. Normally with mods, the realism overhaul compatibility files are either built into realism overhaul or offered as separate zip files. Mines are part of the zip files, so you'll need to delete them for it to work. The other thing you really need is Textures Unlimited uh, for some of the parts that adds the shininess. And so with that, I'm gonna try and go through these parts just telling you what's in the zip file as quickly as possible. And you can delete them as necessary. The, the folders are self-contained, so you can delete whatever folders you don't need. And yeah, anyway. Uh, the 747-400 body, uh, that is like the first part I ever made in Blender, so it's not very good. But how many 747s do you have for Kerbal Space Program, really? So, <laughs> uh, it's up to you. It's not a 100, so it's not the version that carries the shuttle. It is the version, I believe, that launches Launcher 1, which I have a model of that will be coming up later. Okay, so that is the first thing. Uh, oh, by the way, it does have seating for more than 300. So if you want to put 300 ker kerbals in there, go for it. I wouldn't recommend it, though. The next folder is the BE-7 engine. And uh, another folder, this is by Blue Origin. And I tried to make it decent. You can sort of see it. Anyway, uh, but it goes with the Blue Moon stage that they made. And so there's a Blue Moon folder in the mod as well. There are two versions of the Blue Moon that go with the BE-7 engine. And this is the one with Hydrolox RCS, which means it uses both the hydrogen and oxygen uh, for its RCS, and that's this, this is the simpler version. And then the other version, which is more complicated but possibly more realistic, is hydrogen gas RCS. And that uses the boil off from the hydrogen, but can also produce uh, the hydrogen gas from the hydrogen. Uh, that option isn't in the SPH right now, but once you go outside, it'll let you produce hydrogen gas so you can run the RCS thrusters. And yeah, like I said, that's more complicated and also not as efficient as the other option. So if you don't want to go through that business, I just recommend going ahead and using the Hydrolox one. Next up is the Bepi Colombo, which is the Mercury probe. And this is one of my older ones. And the first little bit is the transfer module, which has the xenon gas ion thrusters. Hopefully they still work. <laughs> uh, by the way, these are all for Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 onward. If you have any problems, please do tell me. Uh, but yeah, I'll try and fix it if, uh, if I can. But yeah, 1.3.1 onward. Don't tell me about any older versions. Uh, so this is the... Mercury trans uh, Mercury planetary orbiter, which is an actual probe. It's an odd shaped probe to be honest, but um, you'll need to put solar panels on it. I sort of configure these MTM solar panels for the transfer module, so these will go like there-ish. But you can put whatever solar panels you want. I just didn't want to model solar panels. Um, yeah, that's not going on properly in symmetry. Then there's a sun shield because the solar panels on the little Mio probe, the Japanese Mio probe, are delicate and uh, need to be preserved until it's actually at Mercury. So all these parts have decouplers. You can see Mio probe decoupler, the sun shield decoupler, and then the decoupler for the planetary orbiter. Uh, the Mio probe has an extendable antenna, like so. But I don't recall if I configured these properly for... Um, for... I, I don't think I configured anything properly for remote tech. So you're going to have to watch out for comms. Um, yeah, I don't think that's enough range. So I'm a, in a future update, I'll have to probably edit comms. Just don't use comms. Anyway, um, next up, 
Uh, there's a blue moon folder by ratio you blue moon. Next up is a plane. That's why we're in the SPH because there are a lot of planes. And uh, this is the Rutan boomerang. Odd plane, obviously. You would not be able to get one of these easily built in Kerbal Space Program without being a modded part. And that's why I made it. So that is what it looks like. You'll have to put the control surfaces because I usually think that B9 procedural wings does a good enough job for that. You'll notice right now that the center mass is behind the center of lift and that's because we don't have the engines on nor the control surfaces which will put this uh, pull the center of lift back. After that it should be all right. And yeah, it's just a cute little plane and a complicated plane. So I thought it'd be worthwhile to see how it does in Kerbal Space Program. But that is an option. Now that's a thing though, it's it's not the easiest thing to use these like traditional Kerbal Space Program pieces, right? Because those are sort of Lego piece style. These are very particular. Uh, though you could try and strap a rocket engine to a boomerang and see what happens. <laughs> I mean, if you can make that work. But yeah, these are particular parts. Next up is a Chandrayaan 2 lander from India. And this delivered, well, this tried to deliver a rover. The lander part didn't actually work out. I haven't built the rover for it. Uh, but you've got the lander bit, you've got um, deployable landing gear here. The ramp can deploy like so. The animation is a little bit better when you actually deploy it in flight. There are supposed to be five engines. That is not the right node for that engine. Um, I actually put that engine, it's easier to put the stage and then put the engine. So there's the lander and then there's the orbiter. So I'm going to use the orbiter to occupy that node there. Uh, the orbiter has its solar panels. Well, that side. Um, I think there's a radiator panel on this side, not sure. Um, but then there's actually five engines on the lander, so don't forget that. They upgraded it, originally only had four, but then they decided to put one on the center there. So put the orbiter first, then put that, and then there's a uh, engine for the orbiter placed there. And then you've got it all done. So, yep, this one hopefully has good comms, because I used this. I mean, it's only going to the moon. Um, the, I haven't actually, I don't recall if I actually did the mission for Bepi Colombo yet. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that. Next, Dragon 2. Okay, well, there's more parts in. So, this was the original one, but I don't recommend using this one. It comes with an awful shiny heat shield because I made the whole thing shiny. Um, but it's got the heat shield built in, but it's got other flaws like uh, inside the nose cone, there's no RCS thrusters. Instead, I made this no heat shield one, which is less shiny, but probably more appropriate. There's a heat shield here, which is also less shiny. And here, uh, it's got the RCS thrusters under the nose cone. So... That's right. There is also a trunk. I've had trouble with the trunk though. Uh, with it spontaneously decoupling for reasons I don't understand. So you might have to use somebody else's trunk. Um, and I recommend Tundra Exploration, which has done uh, Dragon things before of good quality. Though I like my pod better anyway. <laughs> so anyway, that's the Dragon. It's got an IVA, but it's not great. Uh, it's not very good at all. But at least it has one. Okay, now the Elegant Design Bureau's custom engines, the ones that the Elegant Design Bureau actually designed. And those go around a stage, this lander stage. There's uh, one that has the engines built in, but the textures got a little bit, you can see that little cross thing, they, they got a little bit messed up. The good thing about this is it does have uh, built-in landing gear and everything, and RCS, but I don't know what that sound was. I don't know if you heard that sound or not. Anyway. Uh, built in RCS. But then there's this stage which doesn't doesn't have the built in engines. And then you can just put on the engines and they don't have that texture issue. So we have one there, one there, and then there's the mounting point in the center. It's got RCS, and you can put the landing legs as you like them. Um, the RCS, so these are the ED1 engines. Uh, these engines are 30 kilonewtons apiece. They have 
lots and lots of ignitions designed for it, and they have a uh, ISP of 360 in vacuum, and they use methane and oxygen. So that's a methane oxygen lander stage, and there is a variant, and that is the um, service module. Okay, that's weird. It's showing the collider on the service module. Okay, uh, don't use this for now. No, that's not the collider. That's the solar panel thing. Hmm. I'll... I'll deal with that later. <laughs> don't use that. That's the service module version, but... Yeah, just don't do that for now. Uh, you can make your own service module. It's simple to make a service module using procedural tanks anyway. It's just a cylinder. So that service module is a little bit more peculiar. But that's a long story, and I'm not going there right now. So, the next engines that we made were the ED2s, which are actually the RCS thrusters, but that comes in this interesting form too, which is the conformal version. Sorry. Well, you can sort of see what's going on there. Uh, this is just the regular block. You can see the conformal version is just a regular block with some skin on it. Okay, and then there's the ED3, which are vernier thrusters. Let me get these off. And then show the vernier thrusters. Vernier thrusters are much smaller. They're basically one kilonewton thrusters burning methylox. So that's that. And then we've got the ED4 engines, which are the main engines on the Sagita rocket. And those have 1,000 kilonewtons. And they also burn methylox. There's a vacuum version of it with a deployable nozzle like that. So you might like that. It has, of course, better efficiency, but it doesn't have as much gimbling, for obvious reasons. And then there's the ED5 pack, which is also a Mephalox engine, uh, but small. They're, uh, I think these are rated at 92 or 96 kilonewtons, so 48 per nozzle, 46, 48 per nozzle. And uh, basically launch escape system sort of thing, or, or just a booster pack for some reason, and you jettison them. Uh, made for landings on the on Mars, mainly on Mars, and uh, we do not have any further ED engines. So there's just the Mephalox series in this right now. Okay, so another custom part I designed as part of the EDB is the Pac-Man encapsulation device or the EDSR. Uh, this is just. Uh, go around your engines, protect them during splashdowns. Optional RCS ports with room for fuel, you can configure the RCS um, engine. There's the RCS options, you can see the thruster power. So they're currently on nitrogen, but it can be whatever fuel you want and tech level, I don't know why it's duplicating that, but and then you can fill it up with whatever if you need to use this for reorientation. For instance, if instead of uh, having a splashdown with a whole stage what you're doing is you need this and you've got a heat shield let's just put a dragon 2 heat shield right now you got oops, no it clips in a little bit too much you got a heat shield there to try and uh, bring this down i do recommend using this with tweak scale the pac-man device because otherwise it's not going to fit the engines properly so have tweak scale in and it has a tweak seal configuration on it uh, but yeah, it's got its own controller, so all you need to do is have a heat shield and then it can... and parachutes. You need parachutes, it doesn't have parachutes built in, but then you can recover your engines. Okay, so that's the EDSR. Uh, the F-16 body. There it is. Okay, very low poly, not very good textures, but it was just a challenge to get the slopes right, if you will. I mean, it's such a particular body that I decided to quickly try and do it with its smiling face and everything. So, yeah. I mean, a minimal effort, let's put it that way. But still identifiably an F-16. So, if you want to use it, you want to use it, put a rocket engine on it and see how it goes. The GSLV Mark III. So, this is, I think, the first proper rocket that we are featuring. We've got the upper stage, very plain textures. There's the upper stage engine, there's only one. That's reasonably detailed. And then we've got the lower stage. There's no separate inner stage. This has to be rotated and 
uh, for now I'm just got to make sure it's rotated with the lettering up there. The textures for the lower stage and the boosters is from a photograph so it's not very high high definition I guess you could say. It had to be adjusted but at least it's correct you know. So and then uh, two of these engines I really oh and they should be placed like this not surface mount and yeah I probably should have put slots in there, but actually in real life they sort of have some sort of insulation there and it's all complicated. And then you'll have to put some custom decouplers for the boosters and then there's two boosters on the side like so. Once again the boosters have the photographic um, texture, so don't zoom, zoom in too much. But basically that's what it is. Again you'll need uh, your own decouplers for the boosters, they don't have decouplers built in. But that's the GSLV Mark III, and that can be used for launching Chandrayaan 2. Next is not a model I made, but one I adapted from NASA, and that's the Mars InSight. And unfortunately, NASA had like a billion different materials on it, and Kerbal only wants one material on each part. So the textures aren't perfect, but it's of such intricacy I couldn't resist. So that's Mars Insight. I didn't add the solar panels. You'll have to put your own solar panels on and because the animation on the solar panels from Mars Insight are really complicated. It's got thrusters and you're gonna have to put your own landing legs. It's just the body of it. I did have the cruise heat shield. Um, so, and I, that's from the NASA model. So I didn't do the model on that. And then also the shell same NASA model. Um, you might have to rotate the shell a little bit and tweak uh, you know the placement of the heat shield. I hope that's... Oh okay okay its center of mass is a little bit off but anyway it's sort of like that and then there's the cruise control package. I might have to edit that center of mass. All of these things I can fix if necessary quite fit the way I, I don't think it's on the right node right now oh, yeah mm. I think we've got some sort of conflicting nodes anyway uh, this cruise package has uh, no that's the shell the cruise package has extendable solar panels just like that and that's your Mars InSight thing as launched on top of the rocket so yeah hopefully that's somewhat helpful somehow Next up is Intelsat. This one I did make. And I made it because it has a peculiarity. This is the I think the first operational geostationary satellite. And the peculiarity is that the satellite is built around the SRB that does its apogee kick. So the SR it, this is the motor that actually circularizes its orbit at geostationary orbit. It's got little thrusters on it too, really tiny ones. Don't expect them to do much, but they're fueled by hydrazine, a little that little bit of hydrazine right there. And yeah, there you go. That's Intel Sat 1. Next up is Launcher 1. And Launcher 1 is um Oh, I forget who makes it. Whatever. Uh anyway, Newton 4 engine goes on the top. It's blanked out. I don't know if it's going to happen anymore anyway. And it's a kerosene oxygen rocket, but it's launched by the by the 747 uh, on the right node. Everything's on the right node. Anyway, launcher one, and then the Newton three engines at the bottom here. Uh, you gotta have to put your own fins, uh, B9 procedural fins. There's the payload adapter, and then we've got custom fairings. And uh, oh yes, it looks like Virgin Orbit. <laughs> Good thing the fairings have that on there. There you go. So yep, launcher one. Probably versatile, you could probably use that for other things too. Next launch system is a full one, not air launch, and that's Long March 3. This takes some assembly, and the first thing is the third stage, and then it has two third stage engines. Which I could probably make a better texture of now. And then the second stage decoupler. And then the second stage tank. 
And then this is complicated. The second stage engine goes in the center, but it's got vernier thrusters that have to be rotated the right way. They'll only attach in the way that they're supposed to. Do not put them in symmetry, uh, otherwise it won't work. So just rotate, and then once you got one that looks right, uh, rotate, pressing E again, and then copy, press E, place, copy, press E, place, and then they're all there. That has to be done because they only vector, they only gimbal in one axis. So for that to be appropriate, you have to get that right. And then uh, the third stage tank, I think, has its own decoupler, right? No, not third stage. <laughs> the first stage tank has its own decoupler, but... Three stages are not enough for this fellow. No, Long March 3 is complicated. What? Uh, no, you're almost there. There we go. Okay, so then we have the first stage engine, which is actually a four nozzle engine. Nope, four nozzle engine. And then we have uh, the couplers for the boosters. And I forget if I allowed, I didn't allow symmetry, so these one at a time, the couplers and then boosters rotate the right way. You might want separatrons on them, they don't have built-in separatrons. And then again, just like the vernier thrusters, rotate and attach. And then you have to do the fins, which unfortunately because of the nature of fins don't immediately rotate the right way, so you're gonna have to fill around with that but that's not too hard oh well especially if you have snap on and get those on before you copy the boosters and then you'll have a long march 3 rocket okay so that's that one next up is something really small the marco satellite mars cube one in the sph is probably rotated wrong we want the the what you got side that has sort of a beveling or inset on it on the top and that inset is for this antenna which will only attach the right way and this antenna extends like so it's uh, the texture is from a photograph and then there's a UHF antenna that sticks to the bottom that we'll have to rotate the right way and the UHF, uh, <laughs> it's so small that the camera. Okay, UHF antenna extend. And then that's it. And that's what it is. It's got little thrusters in the back. It's got some watts of power. Oh yes, of course it has its own solar panels here to extend. I don't know if they're the solar catching axis is right. The thruster power is tiny. The ISP is horrible because it's nitrogen gas, but there you are. Mars cube one. Okay, next Osiris Rex. And that's the body and solar panels. Extend solar panels. Yeah, when you extend the solar panels, it also extends this little grabber thing that's supposed to grab the sample. The this is the sample return capsule with some ablator and room for ore. Um, how you actually get the ore into it, I haven't implemented yet, really. So yeah, this isn't actually an operable arm that it has on it. It's just the model. And so yeah, and when you retract the solar panel, it'll also retract the arm. So that's Osiris Rex with all of its thrusters, lots of thrusters. Another air launched rocket is Pegasus, but this one is SRBs. It's got the instrument unit. It's got the Orion 38 SRB, and then it's got the Orion 50 XL, which sort of goes around like that. And then the solar, uh, not the solar panels, the fairings go on the second stage, around the third stage. Like that. And then the first stage just goes on like that. I don't have separate decouplers. The stages are the decouplers. And you have the HTPB 
Oh, no, sorry. For the first stage, you can't have... You can't have something be a... Hmm. Well, we have a decoupler here. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. But anyway, it, it worked in the video before. So we've got a decoupler there. Obviously, staging is wrong. We've got first stage. You're going to have to put wings on. Um, I put the fairing for the wings, but there are separate wings and control surfaces and a whole bunch of business on this. That is not part of this model, but you should be able to do with um, B9 procedure wings as usual. So, but anyway, that is Pegasus. Next is my own satellite uh, deployment system, OMSAT. And OMSAT is this transfer stage with its extendable solar panels. You can put whatever engine you want on the top of it. I've left the fuel, this is the RCS fuel for its thrusters. It's got little RCS thrusters, but you can put whatever engine you want at the top of it that actually fits into the fairings, the solar panel fairings, and then fill it with fuel. It'll have plenty of room for fuel, as you can see from those copious tanks. And then you put a stacker, and then you put one of these decoupler devices. And if you're using the satellites, you will use one of the satellite's engines. Hopefully on the right node. I, I put too many nodes on this thing, to be honest. And then you can see all those nodes. And then the satellite. And then hopefully that all works out. <laughs> uh, so the satellite is there in this little cradle. And then if we extend... No, nope, that's not the thing. Uh, there. Extend solar panels. Well, let's get... Well, well, let me just copy these and show you how this works. Press E, copy. Another one, E, copy. They're fairly light, so even if you just put like one or three, it could work, but why? You know, you want to put as many as possible. So, like a set of 12, why not? They'll each have their own little fuel and their own little thruster to get into their particular orbit. And if we see here... Oh, uh, oh, we haven't put the fuel in the transfer stage yet, though. I, I think I've already put the fuel in these. The satellites all have their fuel. The satellites individually are about 0.5 tons, so they're not CubeSats or anything like that. But uh, let's say we have a B7 engine here, which is, I think, what I normally used, and then we fill it up. And if it'll update 13 tons with 12 satellites, so not bad. And then the transfer stage can help get it to wherever it needs to go. And each of these, if we pull it out the way it folds out, uh, the way it fold, ultimately looks when deployed is like that. That's how they look. Okay, so that's the OMSAT system in all its glory. And you can use that for any number of satellites. Next is a plane, a very unique plane, the Super Guppy. And do not use the Super Guppy wing. I haven't figured that out yet. But it's just the body. You'll have to put your own wings and engines and everything uh, the usual way. It's got a ramp. It's got colliders in there, so around the body and on the surface there. It should work. You should be able to roll something in there, hopefully. Be careful though. Anyway, close that up. Now, you cannot put a uh, landing gear on the front bit because it's animated. It'll just be floating. So, it just keep in mind that you can't attach anything to the front uh, that you expect to actually move with the front. Let me put it that way. Okay, Super Guppy is done. Tugs. Okay, tug. These are the tugs that I use in all of my videos. They come in many varieties. You'll have to put your own um, docking ports. The downward facing, backward facing, all 30 kilonewtons of thrust, 360 seconds vacuum ISP, methane and oxygen, and four varieties. Uh, two sizes and two different thruster orientations. Okay. And last but not least, the XB70 Valkyrie which um, takes a lot of effort to get to Mach 3 right now. So keep that in mind. It's got nodes for the wings and everything. So just attach those to the appropriate nodes. They're sort of hidden right now because they're small compared to the body. 
but vertical stabilizer nodes there and there. You gotta have to use advanced jet engines engines, which you know if you have realism overhaul installed, should have. If you're using stock, you can put whatever engine seems appropriate, of course, or rocket engines, or you know, do as you like. Um, there are nodes for these. Oh, there we go. Now the canards do not have the control surfaces, so you're going to have to put the control surfaces on them uh, back here. And again, the wings also have the gap for the control surfaces, and you need to put rudders as well. Um, not perfect, but still tough to get this shape any other way. And it is huge. So that is the last but not least, and that is all that it is in the mod at the moment. I haven't added the B-58 since I'm still working on it and other things as well. So I hope they're of use to you. Like I said, they are peculiar, so maybe, maybe not. And But it's the first time I've assembled them all together in one package. The link will be to a GitHub link, and hopefully that'll be for the best. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any suggestions and any problems with the mods, again, KSB 1.3.1 onward. Um, and if you have any suggestions for stock compatibility, I uh, they, they're they roughly compatible with stock. Uh, I try to size them, scale them down as appropriate, if possible. Um, they definitely don't fit in the tech tree. I haven't assigned a price to them at all. So if you try to use them in career, it's not going to make any sense. Uh, probably leave off of the career comments. If you want to adjust the cost, that's fine, but I'm not going to make them career compatible, I don't think. But if there's a functionality issue like... Oh, and if there's any animation on it, I should have mentioned that right up front. If there's any animation on it, it requires B9 animations. Uh, so I think the Raider Nick version of that is probably best. If you have a Raider Nick mod, you already have that probably. Uh, but it's a requirement for his mods. And um, some of these uh, animations are just a stock animation module, but some of them require B9 animations. So keep that in mind. If the animation is not working, um, that might be the reason. But some of them will work just in stock as well. Okay, anyway, so as I was saying, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.